Hi everyone, hope you're all alright. Welcome back to another video. So, this is the first video I have done in a while that is specifically dedicated to IVF. Um, and I'm quite excited. So 2021 is the year of cycle three. Um, for those of you that are new here, I have had two cycles of IVF in the last two years. I had one in November 2019, um, which failed as we didn't have any embryos left over, um, well, any embryos to transfer, so that ended prematurely. And then in the second cycle, we had one early blastocyst to transfer, um, which unfortunately didn't implant. So we are now in the process of saving up for our third cycle, but we made the decision to change clinics. So I'm gonna to talk to you all about that today, um, as we have chosen a clinic, we've had a meeting with the clinic, we've discussed our protocol. Um, so we have quite a firm plan going forward. So we, for those of you that don't know, we were with a clinic called ABC beforehand um, and we have made the decision to leave that clinic because we have had two fresh rounds with them. Um, we really want to focus on why it's not working, we want to try a different protocol um, and we want to do things that we can't get from that clinic. So that clinic offer, um, ABC offers like a shoebox IVF, um, so it's a really basic, really mild package. Um, but the more we've, like I say, we've done two fresh cycles now and the outcomes have been really, really poor. So for us, it was the right decision to leave ABC and find a new clinic that we felt really confident in and felt could offer us what we wanted going forward. So we were having a look at quite a lot of different clinics. We had a look at um, Lister, we had a look at CRGH, we had a look at Care, we had a look at Create. Um, Create our ABC sister clinic, so we did have a look there as we had um, some experience with them as with ABC, not everything is done under one roof. So all of my, like my egg collections and my um, transfer were all done under Create as opposed to ABC, so we had a look there. Um, but when, we also had a look at Zeta West, but when we were having a look and we were kind of putting out for recommendations on Instagram, so many people got in contact with me and said about another clinic that I'd never heard of before, um, but all kept saying really, really positive things about it, and that clinic was the Evewell. The Evewell is in London, it's on Harley Street, um, but definitely check them out. We had a look on their website, and to be honest, straight away I got a really good feeling, um, which is one of the main reasons we decided to progress with it. Um, so a lot of people have got in contact and said, Amber, these are a really good clinic. We had a consultation with them or we've had treatment with them. Um, and when I asked about it on Instagram and I put, I, I tend to ask for recommendations because I think websites can only tell you so much, but lived experiences are something else. Um, so I asked about this on Instagram a few times and quite a few people were saying they are amazing. And honestly, not one person had a single bad word to say about them. Like, and I don't mean a bad, bad word, even like, oh, they're absolutely horrific, don't go with them. I mean, like, people didn't even have a tiny little niggle with them. Like, that was it. Like, there were no issues at all, um, which was just great. So, we had a look on their website. I really, really liked their website. So we decided that they do like virtual open evenings um, where it's almost like a mini consultation. So because obviously at the moment we can't go into the clinic and have a look around and meet everybody in real life, they do a virtual open evening. And that virtual open evening involves meeting one of the consultants, one of the embryologists and somebody from the patient health, uh, patient care team. So we met a lovely consultant, we met the lead embryologist and a nurse from the patient care team. And honestly, I can't tell you how listened to I felt in that. It was a half an hour appointment, so we had 10 minutes with each of them, um, but we were on the call about 50, 55 minutes. They answered all of our questions. They gave me every answer that I wanted. Like, it wasn't even a case of feeling like they were just saying things to please me or anything like that. Like I asked a question wanting a certain answer and every single answer I wanted, I got. So it was amazing. I just got a really, really good feeling from them and I think we both knew immediately at the end of that call that that was the clinic that we wanted to go with. And we finished the call and in fact, Marco actually looked at me and he was like, I feel quite emotional. And I was like, so do I. And so straight away we knew, um, 
that that was the clinic for us. So we have decided to go with the Eve Well. Um, we still aren't planning on starting until September. It is gonna cost us a bit more money than we anticipated. So we are gonna be saving um, an awful lot of money between now and the autumn. It might not be September that we start. We are hoping to start around September, but it might be more October, November time. We're not 100% sure. Um, we want to start as soon as possible, but ultimately, we can't start until we have a certain amount of money in our bank account. We want to make sure that we have enough for this cycle and then a couple of subsequent frozen cycles if we need it. So I'm going to go through it all with you and explain to you kind of why it's costing us more money than anticipated. Um, we had a discussion about what my anticipated protocol would be. So, um, one of the immediate things that sold this clinic to me were the fact that they meet, so that it's a really small clinic in the sense that I think there's there's no more than 30 members of staff. Um, it's a really, really small team and they all discuss every single case every single day. And for me, that was amazing because communication has been one of my top things from day dot and I felt like I lacked that with ABC. Um, so the fact that the consultants are meeting every single day to discuss our case means that no matter which consultant I see, they're completely up to scratch with where we are, which was a huge, huge thing for me. Um, so we were kind of talking about our situation. They, I had before this meeting kind of emailed them and we'd had a conversation and I had kind of brought them up to speed with where we are at the moment and what has happened in our previous rounds and the fact that I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, I also don't have any fallopian tubes and Marco also has low morphology. Um, we also discussed the fact that our embryo quality doesn't appear to be very good and you may remember I have had, um, I've said quite a few times both on here on in and on Instagram about the prospect of Marco having a DNA fragmentation test done in April as our previous clinic thought that might have been the reason why our IVF kept failing. The Eve well have basically said to us, at the moment, they don't think it's necessary. Um, there's a lot of things in our protocol that could have been changed and could be done differently that they are gonna do, which kind of takes precedence. Um, the only issue with Marco's sperm is the morphology. Everything else is bang on. There is nothing wrong with anything else other than his morphology. There are lifestyle changes that we are in the process of making. So Marco has quit vaping. We are both losing weight. Um, we have been given um, certain supplements that we're taking. And on top of that, the clinic have also given, given us kind of um, other recommendations in terms of supplements. So we have got a list of supplements that we're taking, which I'll get onto shortly. Um, we're making the relevant lifestyle changes. So what we are going to be doing is repeating Marco's sperm sample in April. And also in April, we're gonna be um, redoing my day two blood test. So things like my AMH, my thyroid, my prolactin, that is all gonna be redone in April. If there isn't any improvement to Marco's sperm, based on the changes that we're making over the next three or four months, then we may consider the DNA fragmentation test, but at the moment, they don't think there is really much point in us doing that. So that's absolutely fine. So yes, my day two profile will be my thyroid, my AMH, and my prolactin. Marco's will be his sperm. Um, not day two of his cycle, but you know what I mean. So that's when we kind of decide what we're gonna do going forward with regards to Marco's sperm. But in the meantime, so we were really kindly gifted um, Proceive Max by Proceive. Um, they have gifted us um, the supplements that we are taking. So we are gonna be taking those over the next few months and enter Bruce. Hello. Hello. Are you coming to say hello? Say hello. You smell. You smell like poo. Have you been eating poo again? Have you? Okay, so we now have a Bruce as well. Um, anyway, carrying on. So, um, they, the clinic have said they're really happy for us to continue taking Proceive. They were really happy that that's what we were taking. Um, they really like Proceive, they said that there's a lot of studies to show that it is a really good supplement to take, especially for Marco. So that's what we're doing. We're going to continue taking them for the next nine months. They're also happy with me carrying on with my metformin. So I went on metformin in December. Um, 
and I went on metformin to help with my PCOS uh, symptoms because they were getting ridiculous in the sense that I just wasn't having a period. Um, I was really, really struggling to lose weight no matter how much weight I went running and how much good food that I ate, good food. Um, I was just really struggling. So they've put me on metformin and that seems to be really helping me. So the clinic are absolutely fine for me to carry on with that. They've also asked for us to take omega-3, CoQ10 and vitamin D. So Marto, Mark, Mark, Marto, Marco takes um, vitamin D every day anyway because he actually has a vitamin D deficiency. Um, so he takes vitamin D every day, so I've started taking that as well. Um, I am only taking, I think it's 25, I don't know, it looks like a U, so I'm going to call it UD, that's probably wrong, but that's what we're going to call it. Um, so I'm taking quite a small dose of vitamin D, but there is also vitamin D in the Proceive, so that's fine. Um, the CoQ10, I am taking... It's called Nutra, Nutra, Nutravita, 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 um, and I think it's 200, uh, 200 milligrams, I think. Um, I will link all of my supplements below because I've been asked quite a lot about these on Instagram, so I will link all of it in the description box. Um, and then the Omega-3, we we've also been gifted that by Proceive, so that is on its way to us at the moment. Um, so we do quite literally have everything that we need um, in those supplements. A lot of people ask me why they've asked us to take CoQ10 and vitamin D knowing that it is in the Proceive. I don't know the answer to that. I think because it's a multivitamin, perhaps it just doesn't have enough of it in there um, and therefore they would like me to take a higher dose, which is absolutely fine. They've also recommended that over the next nine months we don't eat red meat any more than once a week um on top of that that we eat a lot of berries that marco kind of changes his underwear to loose underwear which is fine he doesn't wear particularly tight underwear anyway um so yeah they've definitely re recommended things like lots of fish um so very mediterranean but a lot of berries so that's that in terms of um, supplements and dietary requirements etc they weren't too worried about my BMI that didn't seem to be something that even really came into conversation um, I am still going to try and lose weight just based on ABC's recommendations and the fact that everybody talks about BMI everybody talks about an ideal BMI weight I'm also just not happy at the weight that I am so I would like to try and lose a little bit more weight um, the other thing they said was in terms of exercise um, they know that both of us are trying to lose weight particularly Marco um, they have said to try and do like low impact, they said, or like mid impact type thing. High impact was a definite no-no. Marco likes to do hip workouts and they were really like, no, you need to be able to get your heart rate up, but still so that you could have a conversation while that was ongoing. Like you can't, you shouldn't be getting your heart rate really high. And they were saying about how quite a lot of, um, athletes who do like really high impact training actually have fertility issues as a result of that. So, um, that is something we're paying a lot of attention to. Um, so with regards to, um, my protocol, the first cycle that I did, I was on Benfolia and Cetratide and the second cycle that I was on, I was on Menopure and Cetratide. Um, I responded a lot better to Menopure than I did Benfolia. Benfolia, I didn't really respond that well to at all. Um, so going forward, they are going to be changing the protocol completely. I have always been on short protocol, whereas they actually think that I'm going to be on long protocol this time. Um, I don't really know a lot about long protocol, but I think that is where you have the days of like taking the pill beforehand, where they kind of monitor your cycle like shut your body down beforehand so it's an induced cycle i think um i can't remember fully but that's what they're thinking of doing they're thinking of definitely doing long protocol instead of short um on top of that they are thinking of putting me on gonal f um which i again i don't know much about but i know it's a much stronger drug and a much more expensive drug than Benfolia and Menopure. So I am probably doing Gonal F and Menopure, um, possibly Bucerulin. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and then they also want to give me a low dose of steroid. Um, so there's something to do with that. I can't remember what it's called. It begins with a P, um, but it's supposed to help with things like natural killer cells um, and help with implantation. So I'm all for that. So I'll be on a lot more medication this time. The other thing which is really bumping our price up, so we, they basically sent us through like a sample of the, like a predicted cost of the IVF um, and there's all these different groups with it. So they give you um, 
like a sample of IVF and then IVF with ICSI and then all the different additional costs that you could be looking at. Um, obviously we, so we need quite a few tests doing again. We can have them done with our GP if the GP allows. If not, we need to do it through the clinic and that's gonna cost us about 700 pounds. Um, but on top of that, they're quite eager to do a freeze all cycle. I'm glad I know this now rather than after the egg collection. Um, but because of my PCOS, they are anticipating with the drugs that I'm on that I am gonna be getting a lot of eggs. They are expecting in excess of 20. That is kind of what they have predicted this far in advance. That was what we were talking about. Because of my PCOS, I'm also a higher risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. So basically, I'm at a risk of OHSS. Um, again, I will link that down below. Um, and because of that, they're quite eager to do a freezal cycle. So if we do a freezal cycle, it means we then have to pay for the frozen transfer on top of the IVF. So we will be paying, say, I don't know, maybe eight and a half thousand pounds for ICSI. Um, and then we will be looking at about, uh, it's, it's something like 1,670, I think it was for the frozen transfer and then another like 500 pounds for the medication. Um, so yeah, you're looking at around another two grand just for that. Um, and then on top of that, they insist on time-lapse. Um, so for those of you that don't know, time-lapse is basically where rather than taking the embryo out every couple of days to look at it, um, it's almost like under a microscopic camera so they can watch it and they can monitor it without actually disturbing the embryo at all. I was really keen to have that anyway. That's a few hundred pounds on top of that. Um, we also, you, they do um, consultations with the embryologists themselves. So I'm quite eager to do that as well. So when you work everything out, um, and the entire cost, including embryo freezing, etc., etc., we are looking at around twelve to twelve and a half thousand pounds, um, which is an extortionate amount of money. We knew that we'd be looking at around nine ten, um, but we weren't anticipating. We didn't even think about the prospect of a freeze all cycle, so that will obviously add money on top of that. And that's all because of my PCOS. It might not come to that. They might not need to do that. I might be absolutely fine, but because I'm quite high risk, I think that is the likely outcome, um, which is absolutely fine. I would rather do it and be safe and it take a lot longer and be taking the pill for a month and then the medication for two and a half weeks and all in all, then have to wait a cycle. Like I'd rather it take three cycles and it work um, than us rush it over two weeks and it not work and us be back to basics. So that's kind of where we are with this. Um, I definitely feel more positive. I feel quite excited. I feel like we have a plan um, and I feel really confident in this clinic. Like I can't tell you how much more relaxed I feel knowing that we're going to this clinic. I am over the moon with that. I'm really, really looking forward to it. So now we start the operation weight loss. We start the operation save money. It works out that we both need to save like 150 pound a week or something obscene um, like that. And it just goes to show really just how expensive IVF is and how important the Fight for IVF campaign is um, because it's just not okay. It's not okay that people have to pay this amount of money because of where they live. Um, you know, this is our third cycle and so some people, you know, by the time we've done this, we'll have paid in excess of 20,000 pounds and you think some people somewhere else in the country have had all three rounds on the NHS and it's just it's madness it really really is um but it is what it is I am feeling really optimistic I'm feeling nervous um but I'm feeling good and I'm excited and I think I'm gonna spend the next nine months um just enjoying myself really and enjoying getting myself ready and enjoying doing the exercise and enjoying eating all this good nourishing food um and do, taking my supplements every day and just I'm just looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. I feel good and I feel like we've definitely made the right choice with our clinic. So obviously over the next year, you're gonna be getting a lot of IVF prep vlogs, um, a lot of IVF vlogs when it actually happens. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. In other news, um, so these sweatshirts are, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing is the sweatshirt from Innovation Fertility. So that is the fertility company I have set up. Um, we have these available in white and pink as well as the t-shirts. Um, so the white, the sweatshirts you can now pre-order. You can only pre-order them for a limited amount of time. 
um, I think it will only be a matter of days, really. Um, so I'll put the link for these down in the bio. In the bio? What am I talking about? They're in my bio on Instagram. Um, but I will put the link for these in the description box below so that you can go and order yourself one if you'd like to. Um, and yeah, so also in other news, I think I mentioned last week, but we are starting a renovation in our house. So, um, and I know people are like, oh, but you've just said that you need to save all this money. There's a difference. Um, yeah, so we we have kind of remortgaged our house in order to do the renovation, um, which I'm really, really looking forward to. But the difference is, the reason I won't do that for the IVF is I resent the idea of it not working and then paying it off um, afterwards. A lot of people have also said to me about access fertility, that Evewell don't do access fertility, um, but we did look at it previously and decided it wasn't for us for a multitude of different reasons. Um, but anyway, so next week, the first of the renovation vlogs are going to be starting because tomorrow we are clearing out the bloody garage, um, which will be our new kitchen. There is so much stuff in there. I don't know if you um, follow my home Instagram. That's another thing that I will link in the description box below. Um, but I did a bit of a tour of what we are intending on doing with this renovation and so many people message me like oh my god how much stuff have you got in your garage and i'm like i know um so we're starting that tomorrow um we've got the structural engineer coming out this week so i'm really really excited so things are full steam ahead so you are going to have literally a year of just so many different vlogs because we have so much going on um so yeah i hope um you've enjoyed this video uh, if you haven't already do make sure that you have subscribed to my channel and that you followed me over on instagram um and i will see you next week for a very exciting first renovation vlog which i'm really really excited about i feel like woohoo all the content is coming um which is really really exciting so have a fantastic week and i will see you through the week on instagram but i will see you on sunday for another vlog so take care have a great week bye